This is the CMO of GaiaX, Vasilia Orfano. This is our newest podcast series. GaiaX is a newly aspiring, rising European association, and together with you, we can develop a new concept of data infrastructure ecosystem based on the values of openness, transparency, sovereignty, and interoperability. Join us today at GaiaX and be part of this technological ecosystem. Hello, hello, hello. This is Vasily Orfanu, CMO of Gaia X. Today we have a special guest, Andreas Weiss from ECHO, the leader for the GXFS project, Federated Services. Hello, Andreas. How are you? Hi, Vasilia. Thanks for having me with you. And uh, everything is fine. Looking for the summertime. And uh, yeah, we are facing exciting times with Gaia X and also with Federation Services. Thank you very much, Andreas. This is uh, your second podcast series, and uh, we appreciate really for the support and the availability that you've taken out of your busy schedule. Uh, we know that this is extremely hectic, especially with uh, work packages that uh, have just been uh, launched from uh, GXFS. Could you please let us know a little bit of the status surrounding the work packages? Sure, I would do so. Well, as you know, we, we started with GXFS last year with the specification. We had the tender process. We assigned the contractors. And now we are seeing GXFS is going to be step-by-step -step functional. So we have the first packages, which are QRA ready, so we can approve it. They are done from a functional implementation. And uh, this is a kind of rollover system for the next couple of weeks. Uh, each of the lots are independent, but of course, we need to bring them together. But uh, this is happening pretty soon during the summertime. So the first package is this authentication authorization. So how to log in in Gaia Exploration. And then we have all these uh, fancy stuff around uh, sovereign, self-sovereign IDs. Therefore, we released a white paper as well, how to manage SSI within the Gaia-X framework um, with components like organizational credential manager, personal credential manager, trust services. And um, this is now the time where we also look forward to keep the alignment with the trust framework, which has been issued by the GAIX Association to manage compliance and registry services. And uh, but, but this is really the cool stuff. Now, within the next couple of weeks, all the puzzle pieces are getting together. And I really hope that things are working seamlessly. Uh, there's still some room for improvement, but in general, I'm, I'm very convinced that we can really offer tangible support for those who are building up Gaia-X ecosystems in the near future. And uh, this will be our key journey now in Q3, uh, also to promote all these services on a staging system so that everyone can play around with it. And we are also looking forward to build an, a network of federations. As you probably know, there is an initiative like Struktura X, where we have all the key cloud providers together in Europe to, to showcase how Gaia-X can work in, in operation. And uh, so this is now the next phase we are targeting. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that we can impress the outside world with what's going on here. This, this is quite clear uh, because you mentioned uh, of Structura X, and this is something that uh, we have announced as of last year, um, equally as to the value of the large houses and how this is uh, translate to future business services. Uh, given that you have been working with uh, GXFS for some time and you are one of the few leaders in the market that is able to represent equally GAIAX and equally the, the project, and, and obviously given your expertise, uh, and we definitely want people like you that hold this line of expertise and can follow up in terms of the technical delivery. If we had to explain to 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 the per to a person, not you and I, someone that does not necessarily understand or have the technical capacity of what the value of the lighthouses are, 
what could we tell them? Like, what would be the problems that the lighthouses are, are actually and in fact uh, solving? You mentioned Structura, but we also have Katina X, we also have uh, Act de Hat Hat, but we also have um, uh, Europe Pro Gigant. We have many, uh, the social network as well. We have many lighthouses. If I can hear your point of view, please. Okay. And you already named two lighthouse projects where I'm really close uh, engage. One of them is Katina X, for example. And uh, if someone asks me, why do we need something like Gaia X? And then we have a look at Katina X. It is really impressive that companies who are in a really strong competition, like the automotive sector, that they agreed to work jointly because they are facing the same challenges in terms of supply chain monitoring, in terms of uh, carbon footprint monitoring and reporting and a bunch of other scenarios where all of these uh, worldwide acting enterprises agreed, we cannot solve it by our own. And this is, I think, the key message why we think we have to design ecosystems for data infrastructure services, because there target is thousands of SMEs and mid-sized companies and suppliers and so on. And to, to get them engaged, they need this level of harmonization, standardization, joint governance to get the buy-in by those they are asking to share data with in the Katina X network. This is a, a matter of trust. It is a matter of making things better. And this is really our key objective. So whatever we do within Gaia X, we need to support very strongly those projects and provide them added value, not any constraints. We need to provide them added value. This is really important. And if you get to this point, and we can really showcase that Gaia X is is supporting these key objectives, then it will be the, the, the biggest game changer ever I've seen in the European Union uh, when we talk about digital transformation. And hopefully we can get there and therefore we need to do a little bit more. Just to outline when we talk about GXFS, uh, I just mentioned what we are now going to release, but there is Luckily, also the French team, which is funded by DGE, so the Directorate General for Enterprise, and uh, they are providing additional means for identity and access management, data exchange services, marketplace services. So we are just in a starting mode. So we are at the beginning of our journey to, to, to get a maturity level around GAIA-X and the operationalization of GAIA-X that we are going to specify scenarios. And this is really exciting. These scenarios will be shown live during the upcoming GAIA-X Summit in November in Paris. So really, as we said, in 2022, it is the time that GAIA-X is running functional. And we just, and I need to emphasize this, GAIA-X is not a product. We don't have a product owner. Uh, it is an offering, it's a conceptual approach, but with a lot of components really to support those Lighthouse projects and any other Gaia-X projects to get up to speed, to, to, to expedite their establishment and to scope on their business cases, because this is still something which is not in scope for Gaia-X to, 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 to promote certain business cases. It should be an enabler to deal with these digital business cases, as we've seen with uh, Katina X and EU Pro Giant and the factoring area and Yona X and all these other lighthouse projects. And I think this is really where we, where we need to keep the community together and, and really make the offer. How can we support you to make your vision, uh, to bring your vision into operations and uh, really showcase that there is added value behind it? Um, you are discussing about the user cases that um, could be 
the result, let's say the outcome of such projects, such projects as Catina X, Structura X, how would the use cases be important, in fact, to create a business value out of Gaia X? And how do you feel that this was not really possible before Gaia X was in place? Well, coming back to this Katina example, well, you know, just from the from the standing, any of these single companies or, or stakeholders like BMW, Ford, Volkswagen, Mercedes, they are capable to put some pressure on their <laughs> suppliers to share data because they this is a very strong commercial relationship. But even they understood if we individually ask each of our suppliers to follow our individual conceptual approach, this is a huge burden for all of these SMEs in terms of technical management. So it is very obvious that we need this level of harmonization. We need a common agreement on identities, a common agreement on service descriptions, a common agreement how to contract on data sharing a common governance and compliance framework. And we need also the outreach that we use a standardization for data exchange when it comes to the connector technology and so on. And all these together is quite obvious if you don't approach the SMEs in a, in a joint effort with a promise, whatever you do with us, any other uh, um, company who would like to exchange data can adopt the same model because we're using open source and open standards here. And I think this is a key message. Um, we are now in the, in the status that we are changing, not just the digital transformation, because we are stepping into data-driven business models, which is always just capable if you have a multitude of data resources up to data spaces who need to interact as well. So whatever we do, we need to keep our key objective to harmonize this, to have common standards, common agreements, common com compliance frameworks, and uh, common means of core identity management, which can be federated. This is the other thing. Each of the federation, they should work safety to mind, from my point of view. But it is obvious that each of these federation are going to interact with other federations pretty soon and other data spaces, which is a special type of federation in my point of view. So this links all together. And if we don't do this groundwork, which is done by Gaia X, and, and we, I think we are pretty advanced with it already. Uh, it is a failure by default. So if we have this perspective, if we want to evolve the German, uh, the, 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 the European and the worldwide economy with the Gaia X concept, then we need to stick on these rules, work jointly together, have always a part which is open, and there's still some areas which are protected by each of the federations because this is their core DNA. This is their business case. You cannot expect that everything is going to be disclosed. So this is more or less the background. I, I completely agree. On a, on a different subject, uh, recently, uh, Daya X and GXFS were had their own booth at Hanover Messe. My colleague Thomas was also there, Thomas Stevens, that is helping us uh, today with, with this podcast as well. Um, and we, we tried to show something. And you also mentioned to me in, in our talks that we got the impression that um, there was some sort of consensus that Gaia X is indeed going somewhere. Uh, and at the same time, we are still hearing a couple of myths uh, that in your recent article that we will release as part of the Gaia X magazine, of which means these are these are and how we could bust them one by one. So one of the points that are mentioned since the beginning, at least of, of my work with Gaia X back in August, uh, they were saying that okay, Gaia X is not moving beyond the concept phase. So, okay, we've heard about the five-year plan. We've heard about, you know, the, the components. We've heard about the trust framework. Okay, you're building this, you're releasing it. At the same time, we're just a year and a half since the inception, of, uh, possibly almost two years since the inception of the IX. So how do we respond to, to 
messages that follow as as, as the follow like the follow as as no technical delivery. We haven't uh, gone beyond the constant phase of GAIX. We are relying too much on US and Asian hyperscalers. We will not go beyond anything that they do. We are strictly dependent on them, and that's why we're influenced uh, in this direction by them. Mean, meantime, we have 350 members coming from across Europe with 17 hubs, 15 being national. So where, where do you think are the next steps? Where should we focus? Priority-wise, opportunity-wise, challenge-wise? First of all, I think we need to clarify when people are talking about Gaia-X, they need to understand that Gaia-X is a multi-stakeholder initiative. There is no single entity to be responsible for Gaia-X. Of course, the association is, is, is a core to define and specify the key conceptual approach of Gaia-X and to provide a good governance scheme around it and to collect the related standards and functional blueprints, let me say it this way. Uh, but on the other side, when I talk to those who are aiming to do something like Gaia-X, I got always some messages like Gaia-X has, Gaia has to do this and this and this. And I always need to ask, well, Gaia-X is a shared responsibility approach. Any party who is engaged must take their own action, but we are capable to synchronize everything that we are still looking for the key objectives. And I'm repeating this again and again. The key objectives are to take care about data availability, availability so that we really get hold of all the data we need to serve for the enhanced smart services. We are talking about data sovereignty because someone who is sharing data will still see, would like to see that he's still the controller of the data because it is his own intellectual property and we want to drive innovation. And this is far beyond cloud computing, far beyond territories or something like this. This is really how to build up new emerging business models and during these times we are facing, we know that the salience of services cross over the globe is really important and it affects the overall society if we don't work into this direction to, to be more independent from single resources. And even cloud is a resource in the digital age. Now, saying this, I also got, have the perception sometimes people say, well, I just need to plug in into Gaia X. Uh, I need some magic dust and then everything is working fine. So this is not the truth. It is hard work to step into these conceptual approaches, to navigate through it, to build up the components and the service framework and everything, and to build up major business cases, which are really showing return of value for those who are acting within these federations. And the thing with, some of the lighthouse projects we are pretty close to this situation. It is very clear where they are going to. It is very clear what are the incentives for all the actors. And they are really turning now into a full operation mode because they have the challenges today on their table. They cannot even wait any longer for something. This is also a recommendation to the GAIA-X Association. We need to expedite and to be very clear with our deliverables and uh, we, we, we need to have a consistent startup package really to support the establishment of such innovation spaces and uh, federations and data spaces and whatever. Um, this is really the, the, the key game changer for our economy and for also finally for our society. So let's go into the section. I've got this. This impression by the Hanover Fair that people are really interested, really interested. They understood there's something growing, which is really important. It helps us in our day-to-day -day work to be more competitive. Just referring to those who are still working just in their production thinking to, to produce goods, which are going to be sold across over the world. 
the margins are going more into the direction of 4%. But if you combine it with data-driven business models, if you enhance it with service models and, and more sophisticated uh, interactions between the product and digital services, then you're going more into the direction of 32% margin. So this is the range. Are you on the, on the loser track or on the winning track? And I'm pretty sure Gaia X will bring you into the track where you have much more uh, return on your investments by product and services. And this is something when we talk about you pro giant, this is the manufacturing part. And we need to, but we really need to showcase because this is a, per, a change in the paradigm, a change in the, the direction of the company in terms of services and getting even the workforces for this transformation is pretty tough. You don't have the skills out there to, to, to just get them into the company. And so we still need to have a kind of, of, of joint activity to promote core concepts and promote the, the uh, maturity of uh, level of services which can be adopted and best case help all the companies on their transformation journey uh, to make use of data-driven business models. So this will hopefully incubate also an ecosystem which is far beyond Gaia-X uh, because then we are really turning into this business-centric approach, which is uh, which should be driven by, by the companies themselves and, and the stakeholder groups. So you, we've been discussing about the value of, of, of GAIA-X, the business value of the services associated and the lighthouses and how important uh, they are. Um, and we need to, to push in this direction because, in fact, this is going to prove something like a huge milestone as to how we can increase services on the basis of Gaia X and the standardization and possibly the trans trust framework compliance. And, and I, I would also believe labeling, but I'm not sure to, to which degree. Uh, what I'm, I'm also thinking though is that at some point we also need to provide added value to those SMEs, to these startups, to those small companies that they do not necessarily have the resources the skills, uh, the money to do something. How can Gaia X um, support them if they are a member of our group? If they are in well, fact, you know, part part of our members. I can just talk on behalf of GXFS that we try to promote a lot of, I think, easy readable white papers just to get a better understanding where to go and what is the background in conjunction with the with the explainer videos, but also our deep dives for those who really want to understand what are my next steps, uh, which uh, is, is really necessary. So you have to build up skills in this area. We are also targeting our upcoming conference in, in Berlin, the GXFS Connect conference, where we may or where we will show some analyzes of uh, a lot of uh, Gaia X use cases and to promote, let me say, some typical blueprints how to adopt Gaia X principles and how to implement Gaia X federation services to be operational. So I think this will help also a lot. Um, and uh, further on, as I mentioned, we are going to plan a showcase based on Struktura X just to show end-to-end -end services crossover provider because this is I think the, the biggest challenge that we showcase that GAIAX is capable to offer services within a multi-cloud multi-edge environment. Um, although we talk about Kubernetes and everything there is still a necessary level of adoption that those services can seamlessly interact and uh, one of my favorites would be that we have a Full GDPR compliant video service crossover providers, which with the quality of service that you can step in from Spain, from Greece, from Poland, from Ukraine, from everywhere with a good quality of service and people are getting together without this awful discussion around am I GDPR compliant? Yes or no. So this can be one of these showcases, which is 
really of relevance for those regulated areas, especially when we talk about schools and universities and so on, which are really required to showcase that in any case they are working GDPR compliant. And uh, hopefully we can show something of this. And this will really be beside the very specific use cases like Athena X, EU Progine, and so on. It will be a, a real good showcase about the value of Gaia X with this multi cloud, multi edge approach, and to have a description of end to end services as we outline with the set description part. And uh, so there are a lot of upcoming ideas. I think we have to do it step by step. Now we need to showcase things are working as expected, and then we can extend it and build additional services within this landscape and uh, engage the community because this is also one of the key success factors. If you don't have a community who's taking up the code and the services for their own purpose and also re-contribute, well, it will be very tough to promote GaiaX for the moment. Sorry. Uh, so yes, absolutely, I agree. Uh, so in, in this direction, uh, because you've talked about the um, GXFS, uh, GXFS Connect event, when is that happening in Berlin? Uh, this is on the 7th and 8th of September. And what do we expect to, to see there? Well, aside we, from the use cases, um, there, there is a clear agenda that we talk on the first day on, on let me say, core principles. Um, yeah, we have this uh, how to establish data infrastructure ecosystems, then how to apply governance and compliance. Um, and uh, and and how to drive innovation. So one of these key areas we would like to promote to discuss. Uh, this is more the first day, and then the second day, showcasing the results of the so-called Gaia X uh, um, funded projects. We have eleven of them in various domains, and uh, they are going to showcase how to adopt GXFS because due to this overlapping funding scheme, they are requested to apply GXFS where applicable. So, and I think this is really uh, a good thing where we can also derive a set of blueprints, as I mentioned, and share them this, this information with the overall community. Um, just to outline, this event will be a German-speaking event because we are really targeting also the the, the, the uh, SMEs with this activity. And uh, uh, we are going to showcase the, the GXFS toolbox implementation strategies um, and also have an exchange with the German hub and the domains about the GXFS today and future requirements. So it's also that those projects and the domains can express their needs and uh, where they expect support by those activities like, uh, as I'm mentioning, G GAIA-X and also dedicated within GXFS. And uh, yeah, and I think this is really, again, to, to gain knowledge, to prepare knowledge for the outside world and to transfer those experience we are collecting so far uh, to share it with others who are looking forward now. I want to step in as well into this GAIA-X concept. And, uh, yeah, so it's now the time to to share this to everyone who is interested. Okay, this is this is quite interesting. Uh, aside from all the the points that you just mentioned, are we expecting that we will uh, showcase some sort of demo during the um, uh, this event or, or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah? We, we are hoping on the demo on the functional level of GXFS yeah. will be scheduled in Germany, and as mm -hmm. I also mentioned, we will proceed with full end-to-end -end scenarios together with uh, the team out of France, because we are now okay. joint team in GXFS. Um, yes. And everyone else is welcome from Italy, from the Netherlands, from Spain. Therefore, we have our, our federation services group within the GAIA-X technical committee. And uh, this is really where we want to show advanced scenarios, which really in showcases how GAIA-X is working in, in life environments. 
Okay. Uh, on a different point, you've also mentioned that GXFS currently is is implemented in two uh, primary countries, uh, uh, France and Germany. You're taking up the German part, and Ansofis uh, uh, is is taking the uh, French part. Um, however, there are two different funding schemes surrounding GXFS. If you can explain how the, the, the project came about in the first place, why did it even start in Germany, why uh, it started second in, in France, and then explain our reasoning and the fact that maybe GAIA-X was indeed, uh, indeed begun as, as a Franco-German project, but now with a different level of hubs, 15 national hubs and two international hubs, the whole thing is expand is expanding to possibly European and then cross border. If you can take me through from your perspective and GXFS, what this means for our audience that may not necessarily understand why this, why that, why <laughs> why did it even become in Germany? Why now it's a is is a, is a European project? Why is now going cross border? Because this is also related to the different criticism that criticisms that we are receiving. If anyone is going to criticize something, I will always say, well, then do it better. <laughs> so if no one keeps you away to do something, but just complaining is, is, is nothing which will advance us. So the background here is, and it is quite obvious, we, we started with Gaia X in no, October 2019. Then very closely we had this joint summit with France, because it was very clear and it was always part of the strategy. We need a good alignment with France in the first place, but in any case, it is an open, at least European and even beyond initiative. So this was clear from the beginning. Now, um, due to this initiation by the German ministry, well, we were from the German side, let me say, lucky that we get some faster funding, but this were on a stage where the Guy X Association was not yet initiated, so it was not in operation. And we had to be careful that we don't just overrule everything by default. And therefore we started with the specification with the engagement of the of the technical committee within the Guy X Association. But we, we had a clear direction and our approach was outline the federation services within the architecture document twenty twenty. And we said, now it's a time to not just to talk about federation services, but also to show how they can work in operation. And therefore, we made this GXF SDE approach with specifications and the various pillars like identity and access management, catalogs, sovereign data exchange compliance. Uh, these are the four key pillars which are described in the architecture document in the first one and uh, push this forward also with a European wide tender. So it was not limited to German companies. It was open for any company in Europe to apply for the implementation. So I think this was pretty open, inclusive, let me say it this way. Um, and now we are in the lucky situation that people are recognizing the value of these services in the scenario descriptions. And now the French team started with a in so far different approach that they are not working with tenders, they can act more agile on requirements and they can work directly. They can work on, on, on uh, proof of concepts. They can just evaluate some approaches um, and, and, and try to make the best out of it and contribute it to the overall GXFS framework. And this is really, from my point of view, no, a huge advantage because we are going to finish our development work by end of this year. And then it will be handed over to the Eclipse Foundation and we can still support the community engagement. And now the GXFS, the French team is going up to speed and can contribute on various extended services. And of course, all the rest of the community, even out of the MBG, can contribute now on these uh, artifacts and hopefully by this we are really getting a very good functional set of services which can be used in various scenarios by different domains and different use cases. 
that's how it worked. So I think just now this, let me say this, uh, or, or uh, asynchronous approach is from my point of view now an advantage to keep consistency, to work closely together and uh, to, to, to support the further evolution of GXFS. Uh, not just by France, then also by other countries and the community in a free open source approach. Wonderful. And as, uh, as a final point, and given that uh, the summit, the 2022 summit, is only a couple of months uh, before, like in, in November of this year, 17th and 18th of November, and it's going to take place in Paris uh, this year. Uh, I would like to ask which opportunities do you see till that time that we would need to take up on, given that we are delivering to a certain degree, obviously, and we still have lots of lesson, lessons learned and some best practices equally. And which are the primary challenges that you see that we need to look at them closer laser focused, if I may say, and actually able to, we are actually able to receive, to release something concrete by the time of the summit. My recommendation in the direction of the association would be that we now need to have a consistent package, a startup package. What does it mean to be Gaia X? This is on the, on the governance level according to the PRC specifications and on the technical level with the architecture document and the federation services. So this is for me a, a package. Yeah, this is good to go and it should be consistent. Right now we have some loose ends. We know the trust framework is more a kind of POC. It is just to showcase where we want to go, but it is not mature enough to really indicate now a service is GAIA-X compliant. We have the label document with some key objectives, but it is not yet said how to assess them and what has to be promoted by the applicant for, as evidence to really showcase I'm following these requirements. To have some criteria, but how to show evidence on fulfillment and what are the thresholds and what is the procurement around this labeling concept? This is still not yet verified, and I should think. We should expedite. We should be very soon to get to a level. This is our version 1.0, and this is how it works. It can be advanced, but we need to really start with a package. Because this is, if we want to keep the buy-in by these lighthouse projects, they also need some stability. Because if they want to achieve this level of GAIA-X compliance without knowing what happens in the next three months, this doesn't work at all. No one can step, step into such an engagement if you don't know, well, now we are most likely compliant and in three weeks we are no longer compliant because you introduced <laughs> new rules which are not yet known and discussed. This is not how it works. Uh, so we, we need this consistency within, let me say, six months to 12 months. And we need also the buy-in by these projects to moderate the criteria. Otherwise, it will go into the fully wrong direction. So this is one of my concerns and so-called challenges to get this done, to have a clear, consistent message by the end of this year. This is GAIA-X. This is the role of the association. This is the role of the ecosystem around it and the community. And this is how we can provide you a consistent path to progress to enhance to evolve whatever and uh, from a gxfs perspective and equally echo how can you help in this direction conclusively yeah as we said and I always outline echo is here, just a procurer we are not the developer entity we don't decide we just try to be careful with tax money in the sense we provide <laughs> one, something yeah. which is which is useful um, we are discussing that we are going to extend our dissemination support until October next year. Uh, as I said, development will be finished by end of this year, and we will hand it over to Eclipse Foundation as a project to contribute the code for the community. Uh, and then I think 
those who would like to adopt GXFS still need some guidance in terms of roadshows and the workshops. Probably they have to build up a curriculum or, or any uh, Gaia X Academy. I don't know. <laughs> um, things we have to push forward and to hand it over and to stabilize everything around GXFS and, uh, yeah, and, and, and talk about the results really to showcase we, we need these feedback loops not just to push it into the market, also ask the market, could we solve something of your challenges? What is not yet addressed? Is it something which should be addressed for the, by the community because everyone is facing the same challenges? So let's, these are the things uh, we would like to moderate uh, because it's just, as, as we are representing mainly the digital infrastructure service providers, on the level of data centers, cloud, and uh, interconnection services, and so on. I think this will be also our our activity for ECHO for the future, even if it is not supported by any funding scheme. Yeah, but I completely agree um, also on my, on my end, because I've been involved in procurement. I mean, possibly procurement is the basis to build something, but then again, it's, it's an organizational um, objective to take this up and, and build it further i completely agree uh now on on a final final point do you think that the market is indeed ready to accept gaia x and, and federated services and as, as we currently stand we know the reasons behind we know the need but do we know whether the market is ready to accept like truly and sincerely what the offering is all about and you also talked about the academy, the, the need for more curriculum, the need for more education, the need of tutorials, the need of webinars, the need for communication and in different formats to push out this understanding of the need and, and clear some misconceptions. What would you say about this? I think when we started, we had a lot of academia included. True. Which is obviously necessary just uh, just from the skills and the methodology, but now we have to turn it into a more hands-on approach. We, we, I'm, I'm always talking about industrial deployment. If the GAIA-X concept is not applicable for industrial deployment, then we have a huge problem. So whatever we do, it must be really applicable to be used on large scale in a multitude of environments with a multitude of actors. I think this is a challenge. So we don't, we shouldn't over sophisticate Gaia X at this point. We should really scope on some core elements. As I said, this is a, the, the ground. And I'm saying Gaia X is most likely a kind of operating system for distributed cloud edge continuum environments, whatever. Um, but we all learned that we are changing now from this hyperscaler centric approach back to a decentralized approach. And everyone has understood the need to go into this direction. It is related to the enormous growth of data. Uh, today, we are talking about six zeta byte, which is already an awfully huge number. Uh, it will be very soon more than 30 zeta byte and even more. And all, most of the data, and this is a statement by the EU Commission as well, 80% of the data will occur in the edge. If we are talking seriously about data-driven business models, we need to be very clear, the edge is a key part of any of these scenarios. And most of the companies who are a little bit advanced in terms of manufacturing using digital twins, asset administration shell, and all these things. They already collect their data in the edge, and now they're getting to the point how to monetize them, how to use them for improved services like predictive maintenance um, and, uh, and predictive services in general, or joint services. Also, if you talk about mobility and autonomous driving and all these things, these are the practical aspects. And we need to translate now the Gaia-X concept into these practical scenarios. 
And at a certain point, no one will talk about Gaia X anymore. It is our distributed, decentralized digital infrastructure ecosystem at a glance with a multitude of interconnections. But Gaia X is the key incubator to get into this direction and probably also the key stakeholder to keep things consistent in terms, again, of governance, applicable standards, and blueprints, how to orchestrate such pretty complex scenarios. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Andreas. As once again, I mean, in all the, the series of presentations, the third party events, and, and possibly the occasions that we had the chance to, to, to work together, and uh, the support uh, wow. that we're receiving from GXFS, and hopefully we are also supporting you uh, in many aspects. Uh, I would like us to engage um, and engage our audience for our next podcast series with you. Uh, this will be targeted on a GXFS basis. And uh, I would like to, to, to simply engage you to our next podcast in, in next two, three months from now, if you're also available, I think uh, our audience uh, will be highly appreciative of all the information that you brought forward and that you're bringing forward. And as I mentioned in the past, we, we only have a few leaders that are both technically understanding and obviously they, they have an expertise technically, but can equally translate this very difficult technical elements and components into concrete language for the rest of the people that may not come uh, with your expertise or anyone else's with, within GAIAX. As such, Andreas, thank you again uh, for your time and availability today. And we would be really glad to see you in our next podcast series of GAIAX. Thank you very much for having this opportunity. And the next time we can share the insights we got from the project, and this is really where we want to turn it into this more practical scenarios. And hopefully this will help everyone else to get a better understanding around GAIAX because it's, as I said, a beast. It is so complex. So we, we need to explain it again and again, and this is not, not, not the problem. As long as people are willing to change their mind and to be open-minded and look into this direction. Thank you very much, um, Andreas. This is the Guy X podcast series with CMO Vasily Orhan of Guy X. Thank you very much for joining us, sharing, engaging, liking, and following. Take care. Mm -hmm.